Hi, I'm Jesse. Let's have a devotion. Let's continue in Romans 10. When we evangelize, we are wholly dependent on the Holy Spirit because it's only by the Holy Spirit that someone can confess Jesus as Lord. It's only by the Holy Spirit they can fully believe in their hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. God has decreed in his word that he will richly bless everyone who calls on him and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, verse 14 of Romans 10 tells us why evangelism is necessary. How then can they call on him they've not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. You want a godly pedicure? Share the gospel. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. This is a quote from Isaiah 52 uh, verse 7. This was, uh, this was one of my bride's favorite verses. She wants to get a tattoo on her foot with this verse because she was a missionary to Malaysia. And this was just what she saw as most important in her life. When you share the gospel, when you bring the news, even your stank, nasty feet are beautiful. But not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the message about Christ. So you by sharing the message of Christ, make it possible in this person's case for faith to come about. Now you're not necessary. If you disobey, God could use someone else, but we've been commissioned to make disciples and so we obey. There's no greater honor in our lives than to have this message and to share this message, to present the word of Christ so that by hearing they may have faith. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the gospel of peace. So may your feet be beautiful, Christian. How can they hear Without, without someone preaching to them? How can they call upon the God they haven't believed in? This question comes up frequently. What about people who are born in the heart of Sudan? What about people in the heart of Cairo, Egypt, and the heart of Saudi Arabia, and the heart of Pakistan, where all they've ever known is Islam? What about the people in the heart of, uh, in, in the heart of Mumbai, who haven't yet heard from the Christian missionaries like Certain families that I know and love who are out there. I hope you're listening. I love you guys. What about these people who have never heard the gospel? They never heard the name of Jesus. How can they call upon the God they've not believed in? How can they believe unless they hear? And how can they hear unless someone preaches to them? And how can they preach unless they're sent? So let's start in, this, in reverse order. I am hereby sending you to Seattle if you're in the Redemption Church. You are sent to Issaquah. I hereby send you to Renton. I send you to Kent. I send you to Kennedale. I send you to Newcastle. I send you to your place of work. I send you to your neighborhood. You've been sent. And so speak. Speak the words of Christ so that by faith they may hear and believe in him. And then when they hear, they may believe. As they believe, they are saved. This is necessary. It's God's prerogative to, in what I think is a sovereign act of election, just pour his spirit out on someone and by specific revelation, bring them to a knowledge of the gospel. I think he does this in Cairo, Egypt. I've heard of missionaries reporting exactly that. I think he's done this in Afghanistan. Where I've heard of missionaries there likewise who have lived their whole, they, they encounter people who have lived their whole lives in obedience to Islam, for example, and they come up to these missionaries and they say, God showed your face to me in a vision last night. And I wanted to tell you that I've given my faith to Jesus. He's not just a prophet, he's Lord. It's incredible to behold. God can do that, but historically, what is God doing about lostness in the world? We are the solution. The church is the solution. There is no backup. It's this. We either do this or society around us crumbles. It's, it, we, we share our faith or people are left to their own devices and we continue careening down the slippery slope. How can they call upon the God they've not believed in? This is why we just studied apologetics. How can they believe unless they hear? This is why I'm training you in evangelism. How can they hear unless someone preaches to them? Here's what you say, you bring them to the scripture. And how can they preach unless they are sent? I hereby send you out. Evangelism is necessary because it's how God structured the gospel to go forward. Jesus commissioned his disciples and we've inherited that commissioning go and make disciples of all nations. This is our marching order, Christian. This is more important than anything else in our lives. 
And I'm not saying everybody needs to go become missionaries and leave their jobs at Boeing or Amazon or Google. No, I'm saying you're a missionary at Amazon. You're a missionary at Boeing. You're a missionary at Google. You're a missionary in your neighborhood. You're a missionary in your family. You're a missionary to the people who follow you on social media. How can they call upon the God they do not believe in? How can they believe unless someone preaches to them? I'm here by sending you, so preach to them so they would believe and be saved. This is why we have our jobs where we have our jobs. This is why we live where we live. This is why I move my family to this area. Now, are you ready? Pray.